Last time in separations and mass transfer operations, we talked about the solution procedure for a single liquid-liquid equilibrium stage. Recall that the feed is typically composed of some solute, the letter A, uh, mixed with some diluent, letter D. Into the stage also flows some solvent, which will extract some of the solute into that phase. In a single mixer settler, there's only one raffinate and one extract stream, each of which have three compositions for the three components. The first step in the solution procedure for a single equilibrium stage was to first find the mixing point using a material balance. Recall, you can use the equations F plus S is equal to M. You can also use the equations, uh, yeah, any one of the three, XA of the feed times F plus XA in the solvent times the solvent. Typically, it's worth noting that there typically is no solute already in the uh, solvent. So this oftentimes goes to zero, is equal to XAM times M. These are the two material balances that you can use to find the mixing points. You only need two of these equations to find what the composition is. Next, when you find the mixing point, you want to plot that on your equilibrium data and then use a tie line only if the mixing point is in the two-phase region to find the compositions of the products. Remember, that where the tie line intersects the equilibrium data is the compositions of your uh, raffinate and your extract products. That will give you these three mole fractions and these three mole fractions. The final step is to find the flow rates of the products. So that's finding the flow rate of R and E. And in order to do that, you can use um, the mixing point again, you could say M is equal to E plus R, and then you could also use uh, one of the component material balances. So for instance, you could say XA at the mixing point times the mixing point equals XA of the extract phase times the extract flow rate plus XA of the raffinate times the raffinate flow rate. And then once you solve those two equations for two unknowns, you have then solved for each of the eight unknowns that are in this process flow diagram. Today we are going to extend that, pro that solving algorithm to a multi-stage liquid-liquid extraction process. Multi-stage. So here's an example where there's three equilibrium stages. Each time I'm feeding the raffinate from the stage before to the next stage. This, I'd like to also point out, is a cross-current configuration. We'll talk about a counter-current configuration a little bit later. But there's two ways that you can um, configure these liquid-liquid extraction processes to go. In the cross-current, I'm feeding fresh solvent to each stage. So S3 is here. Um, typically, the solvent is pure or nearly pure. So this is pretty efficient if you have a uh, access to a lot of pure solvent and you don't mind wasting some solvent. Uh, so depending on what you know, you can just use the algorithm and step through it algorithmically. In other words, you could, if you knew what uh, the feed was and what the flow rate of the solvent was, you could treat this first mixer settler as just a single equilibrium stage, which will enable you to find the flow rate of the raffinate all three mole balances of the compositions. Uh, also, you'd find the flow rate of the extract and all three mole compositions of the extracts. Once you know what the raffinate is, and assuming you know what the flow rate of the solvent to uh, mixer settler two is, you could then solve for mixer settler two. And that would enable you to find what the flow rate of R2 is, along with the mole fractions of everything in the raffinate phase. So same variables. And uh, just to highlight, my naming convention is, I like to say it's X times X. First subscript is the um, component. Second subscript is the stream. It's a little bit clunky, but uh, if you're careful about it, um, it's helpful in making sure you don't get confused. So XD, E2, and XS, E2. So again, you, once you know what R1 and S2 are, you'd then find the mixing point of mixer settler two. You'd plot that mixing point on your equilibrium diagram to find what the compositions are first, and then use your material balances to find R2 and E2. 
And you just keep stepping through if your objective is to find, if you have the number of stages specified and you just want to find what the uh, outlets would be, you just keep doing that over and over again until you've reached your design number of stages. This is another good time to review the three types of problems that you can get and review the three uh, types of variables that you might be asked to solve for in the liquid-liquid extraction process. The first variable that you would be asked to solve for is n, the number of stages. And if you're asked to solve for the number of stages, this assumes that you know what the solvent flow rate is. So Sn known. Uh, and you also have uh, a design target. So you'd have, um, I'm going to use a lowercase letter n. Uh, you would know what uh, xin is. And that would be all you'd need to know to solve for n stages. The second type of problem is the one that asks you to solve for a solvent flow rate. So solve for a uh, solvent. In this type of problem, you would then know the number of stages, n known, and xi of n is also known. And the third type of problem would ask you to find what the compositions are. Uh, xi e of stage n and xi r of stage n are the variables you need to know. And for that, you would need to know how many stages you have uh, and also how much solvent you're feeding to each stage. And I generally classify these as the design, evaluate, and predict type problems. Okay, a couple of other uh, important things I wanna note. Uh, if you ever get stuck, you can always go back to, to these two things that I'm about to tell you. The first is that in each mixer settler, um, what comes in must be in material balance with what comes out. So key points of LLE. Uh, for each stage, in is equal to out. And that might seem obvious, but again, I've seen students um, get panicked or, or get confused. If you always remember that what comes in is equal to what comes out, you'll be in pretty good shape. Uh, the second thing is that um, anything that comes off of a stage, so the two streams that come off of a stage, two stages uh, exiting each stage, are always in equilibrium. In equilibrium. So if you think about how many variables do I need to, to know in order to solve any of these. Um, so for each stage, I said I have a material balance. On each stage, I have three material balances that I could write for each stage. And that is because I have three components. Technically, I have the overall material balance too, but remember that one is not independent. So three material balances on each stage. And if I know that the things that are exiting each stage are in equilibrium, uh, there's six composition variables that I can have on each stage. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. I only need to know one of those in order to calculate or find the other five. Only need one to find other five. Now that seems interesting. That seems like um, it's almost too good to be true, but think about why that happens. So on the ternary diagram, Let's just say for sake of argument, I know that um, I'm going to give myself, I'm going to specify that um, the, the composition of the solute, acetic acid in this case, in the extract phase uh, must be 10%, uh, let's say. And let's say in this problem, we've specified that water is going to be the solvent. So I said that um, solvent and diluent um, designations come from the context of the problem. So last time it was flipped, this time we're going to say water is the solvent because that's what the practice problem later is going to use. So if I specify that X of acetic acid of the extract is equal to 0 0.10, that is enough to tell me everything else I need to know about the other streams that are coming off of that stage. So solvent a solute equal to 10 is along this red line that I'm drawing in. 
And that only crosses the equilibrium diagram in two places. So either on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. And if I specify that it is in the extract, that, remember, is the solvent-rich phase. So I have two choices. I could either choose the one that's closest to vinyl acetate, which by process of elimination must be the diluent since water is a solvent, or it has to be um, this one. So this is the composition of the extract. So notice by putting this dot there, I have then specified what the other two compositions in that phase must be. I can do two more lines so I can find the composition of my vinyl acetate by um, finding where it is on this axis. And I could also do the same thing for water by finding where it is on this axis. So just by, again, by saying this one number, this one specification is the only thing I need to specify the other two things. Now, how do I get the other three things? Well, if this is coming off of a stage, I know that it must be in equilibrium with the other thing. Therefore, there is a tie line that connects them. So if I go to this point, I can draw a tie line in and kind of making it look like it belongs. And where the tie line intersects the equilibrium data on the other side is the composition of my raffinate, Xi of the raffinate. Uh, so this information will be helpful as we start going through and solving some problems. Uh, typically, you're only going to be given one design specification, but again, that will enable you to find the other five variables. And then once those five variables are known, um, solving the material balances after that is often a piece of cake. Uh, so we've got a practice problem today, and I'll save that for the next video.